Welcome. This next unit, unit 2.5, we'll start getting into fluids. So first we need to address the issue, what is a fluid? A fluid is a liquid or a gas. They're considered fluids because they yield to shearing forces. Remember, shearing forces are forces perpendicular. So if you have a, a long stick and you push, not you don't stretch it or compress it, but you push perpendicularly to the length of the stick, that stick can bend. Solids resist these shearing forces. Liquids or fluids, liquids and gases do not. So a fluid is anything that can, that can really flow is one way of thinking about it. So fluids often colloquially are thought of just as a liquid, but gases are fluids as well. You are actually sitting right now or watching this standing in a room filled with a fluid, right, air. How much a fluid resists the shearing force is dependent upon a the fluid's viscosity. It's a, it's a material component of the fluid, how the fluid behaves. Viscous fluids, you can think of as thick fluids. Syrup and honey are very viscous fluids, whereas motor oil and is designed to be a very low viscosity fluid. Now, fluids resistance to shearing forces, they don't, they yield the shearing forces, but they do resist them somewhat. You can have, in very specific certain circumstances, uh, in low temperature physics, you can have a viscousless fluid, right? A, a zero viscosity fluid. Um, liquid helium at very, very low temperature has zero viscosity. This is, would actually be really weird if water, for instance, had zero viscosity. If water had zero viscosity, propellers wouldn't work. If air had zero viscosity, propellers wouldn't work. Uh, you couldn't swim in a fluid with zero viscosity. You'd sink right to the bottom. So viscosity is just a measure of a fluid's resistance to those shearing forces. Now, and you've probably all had, you know, elementary and middle school science, you know that there are three states of normal matter that you encounter in everyday life. You have solids, liquids, and gases. But in reality, there are five states of matter. The fifth, fourth state is that of a plasma. A plasma is nothing more than an ionized gas. If you continue to heat up, an, uh, uh, for example, let's imagine water, you have ice as a solid. You heat it up, it becomes a fluid, a liquid, and you heat it up again, it becomes water vapor. If you continue to heat up that water vapor, eventually the molecules get so much energy that they start to break apart and you end up getting hydrogen and oxygen gas. Continue to heat up that gas and the electrons themselves start getting knocked off of those atoms, creating a sea of plasma, a sea of char positively charged ions and negatively charged electrons. A neon light is an example of a plasma. Um, an incandescent, uh, not incandescent, a fluorescent light has a plasma, a gas in it, ionized gas. The surface of a sun is a plasma. And then the fifth state of matter is called the Bose-Einstein condensate. This is, this is typically done in very low temperature physics. So Bose-Einstein condensates you will not experience in everyday life, whereas many of us have seen a neon light which contains plasma. So we're going to be concentrating on mainly liquids and gases. Plasmas have very odd physics behaviors compared to normal gases, and that's a bit beyond the scope of this class, and we will not be looking at Bose-Einstein condensates at all. So we're just going to be worrying about liquids and gases as fluids.